Hey guys, Taylor here with Seavers Bloomin' Farm and welcome back to the Bluff Bottom Bloomin' channel where we talk about all things gardening, growing, roses, and even a little bit of our homesteading experience as well. So I am here today, first off, if you wanna go ahead and skip through part of our videos, I've never explained this before, but in each video in the description, I have a little section there where you can click through to the different topics within the video. So I invite you, if you want to skip over this introduction and this farm update, um, go ahead and then you can skip right into the video, which is gonna be about cover crops today. But I wanted to share a few exciting farm updates because yesterday I made it official and I went ahead and placed my order for 145 roses for next year. So these will be coming in bare root in the spring and I am planning on doing a pre-order for bare roots kind of like I did last year and then um, also then potting them up whatever doesn't sell bare root. So to explain, last year I ordered a um, hundred bare root roses. I planted 50 of them for my cutting garden and then I decided I would sell the other 50 uh, locally and it went really well. It was also a last minute order so I didn't really have time to do a lot of uh, pre-order explanation and all of that and by the time I got them I really needed to pot them up and, and all that. So I ended up selling them all which is fantastic. Um, but this year I have a lot more to sell. So all of these will be for sale. None of these I'm, well actually maybe 10 of them I might be planning for cutting, but all of these will, will be for sale. And um, so I'm really excited. This is my little mood board um, in the catalog. I cut out the ones that I chose and kind of laid them out to, to make sure I didn't have too much of one color or, or what. But um, so what's exciting is that I am in the process of getting our website up to shape so that those of you maybe watching on YouTube could order roses from us and get them shipped to your house in the spring for you to plant them in your garden. So I'm very, very excited about that. Um, so if you want to get on our email list to be notified when our roses are up and ready to go, you need to go to seversbloomandfarm.com backslash rose hyphen list. And I will put that link on the screen. And so that's where you can go. When you subscribe there, you'll be tagged in our email list um, that you're interested in roses. So you will for sure get an email when all our roses are live. So sign up there. Um, otherwise, you can just join our regular email list as well. But that is specifically if you're interested in roses. Um, so I'll try to keep the rose content specific uh, to you there. Anyways, so... Very excited um, to start this. We have some really beautiful varieties, some that I've been growing in my garden for the last four years, and they're just absolutely stunning. So I was really excited to get an opportunity to um, sign up for an account with this wholesaler, and we'll see how it goes. I'm a little bit nervous because that's a lot more plants to move this year than I than last year, so I'm a little bit, a little bit nervous about that. So I would encourage you if you're watching this video, please check out our website. Please, um, if you can, order from us. We won't be able to ship everywhere, I'm sure, in the United States. I have to look into more um, state by state wise, but um, that is our goal. So hopefully we can um, sell almost everything bare root and then the rest will be sold locally um, as potted plants later in the season. And if, and if we have to hold them until the fall, then that's fine too. So they'll be nice and potted up in our, in our little high tunnel. So that's our latest farm update. Um, as far as let's get in the video today. Today I wanted to talk about cover crops. So first off I'm going to explain what a cover crop is. Um, my background in cover crops has been traditionally more in the agronomic side of the world, the corn, soybeans, larger scale. Um, that's actually when I studied for my master's, that's what my thesis was on. We studied um, how cover crops affected corn and soybean yields and soil fertility and all of that. Um, so this idea wasn't new to me, I guess, but um, so I have a little bit of background in cover crops. We actually did our first um, cover cropping uh, on our large field, and that is a whole different beast that we'll talk about another day as well. So what is a cover crop? A cover crop is any sort of plant or crop that you would sow in the soil, and the purpose is to not be harvested. 
It's basically, as in the name, to cover the soil. Um, you can pick out different plants that do different things. So some crops are legumes. So they will fix nitrogen naturally. And so the idea is that they're adding nitrogen to the soil. Um, some crops, crops are really great at scavenging nutrients. They have a really awesome root system. They're able to um, pick up nutrients that are, maybe have been deeper in the soil. And the idea is that when they bring them up and then they are killed or they die, then all those nutrients will be deposited on the soil surface. Um, some cover crops are known for uh, breaking up soil compaction, or uh, like daikon radishes are known as the tillage radish. Um, so some are just there just to prevent erosion loss. You know, some people are farming in these really hilly situations and they need something to cover the soil during the off season. Um, and that could be summer or winter. So um, that's just basically what a cover crop is. And remember, it's not really that you're wanting to harvest from that crop. So you're not really wanting to um, bale it or um, cut it and take all of that off. The idea is that you're keeping all of those nutrients in the system um, and you're adding more carbon to your soil and stuff as that breaks down. Um, a lot of people will terminate their cover crop in different ways. So um, big scale, they might uh, use herbicides or you can use something called a roller crimper that basically like rolls it and chops it up. Um, you can um, till it in or mow it or tarp it um, in, in uh, smaller situations. Kind of a lot of different ways that you can manage your cover crops, right? So it can be a little bit daunting, especially for a larger scale farm, but even for a small farm. Okay, so basically from here over, I have my annual um, crops, and even I did some green beans in here this year. So this is my cutting garden. I typically have seven annual beds, and then I have a couple perennial beds. And, um, you know, for various reasons, I just learned that I really don't need as many beds as I thought I did. And I also have expanded my growing space because I have a large 30 by 96 tunnel um, out there behind, behind me. So I just really did not need all of this space. But I didn't want to just leave the soil bare and mow it. I thought maybe if I practice using a cover crop, I could um, learn more about it, cover cropping on a small scale, and then also just help build soil health and all of that. And I just wanted to mitigate weeds because I don't really want to be spreading a lot of weed seed as well. So I'd rather have um, a cover crop that I let mature to a certain stage and then kill it before it's going to set its own seeds as well. So that was kind of my thoughts when I decided to cover crop. Um, so then I had this idea to do a cover crop and then I was like, well, you know what? What if I planted my sunflowers where I'm gonna plant my cover crop as well? And so a lot of times when I plant my sunflowers, they're single stem, so there's just one harvest off of them and it's kind of just a barren waste of just long stalks until I can get another succession going in that spot and I often have weeds come up in between the sunflowers. So I thought, well, okay, if I'm gonna spread this cover crop, sunflowers really take off. I could probably do a couple successions in the cover crop and the sunflowers will, um, I'll be able to harvest from them. It'll be great. And then well, what if I plant some of my ornamental popcorn that I'm gonna use this year? And oh, what if I try to put some squash in there too? So I have this whole system of like the sunflowers and the corn and the squash on the ground and then the cover crop in between. It'll be this glorious thing. And I just thought the cover crop's gonna take a while to mature. So I won't have to worry about terminating all this really early and blah, 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 right? So I was thinking of the three sisters, you know, the Native American, um, system of growing polyculture system where there's the corn and the beans and the squash and they all grow together and it's so harmonious right so anyways i did this i sowed my cover crop i direct seeded the sunflowers um and when i direct sow my sunflowers i usually every week plant another succession right so i was a little delayed in my second succession but my sunflowers came up great they were taller than the cover crop which was buckwheat um, I also had some alfalfa in the mix as well, but um, mainly the buckwheat is what came up. And so I was really excited and I was like, okay, so this will be great. And then the success, second succession is going to be fine, whatever. No, all of a sudden everything took off. It just went insane. 
Um, the sunflowers were awesome, but the second succession got drowned out by the buckwheat and then some weeds started popping up. I had some water hemp. I had some reseeded amaranth um, and some foxtail and then the, it was just, it got to be a lot and the sunflowers just never thrived and neither did the squash and the corn kind of got knocked over. So it's still there, but it's not doing much. Um, and I just got insane but instead of you know being a responsible person and just trying to terminate everything um, at least and get my sunflowers off and then trying to like mow everything terminate it um, some of the amaranth that came up is actually really useful in cut flower arrangements and for drying and I have a wedding in October and it's a really pretty color it's called velvet curtains and so I thought okay well I'm gonna l wait until that matures enough and I'll cut these big seed heads and I'll dry them and so I'm just gonna leave everything for now and it'll be fine and I will get back to it right well it got insane in here it got really insane and um, so finally I just decided I was going to do my own makeshift roller crimper method of terminating it so I'd harvested my sunflowers um, I started just knocking all the sting all the stalks down for everything and that worked great for the sunflower area but it didn't work that well for the back half which was mostly weeds and some buckwheat in there but the it just was a mess so did my cover crop experiment fail some would say yes completely failed I would say not completely I did cover the soil so you do have that not that I am worried about a lot of erosion loss in here. Um, but my other alternative was to just keep it really weedy, right? And um, never try to knock it down or anything, or just to keep tilling it. And I knew, I knew that I did not want to keep tilling the soil because um, there's been lots of research out there um, that tilling the soil is not great for your soil microbiology and your soil health and then also your structure it degrades your structure over time and so I'm trying to be as minimal as possible with the tillage and so a lot of people how they manage like their aisles and their extra beds in their garden is they will just till till, till rototill over and over and over again over throughout the season um, and so I was trying to avoid that and that is why I did this whole cover crop thing in the first place so wasn't a complete failure because I did cover the soil and it wasn't all weeds. I was able to get my sunflowers out of it and all of that. Um, and honestly, if I would have terminated the cover crop at the time that I needed to, because buckwheat, it only took about a month for it to be at the stage where I could have terminated it and it would have been fine. But I let it go a little bit longer because I wanted to get the sunflowers and some of those amaranth heads that had volunteered out, that's kind of where I got into trouble because that's when the fox sale took off and all those other things. You're not going to completely eliminate all weeds um, from your cover crop stand. But um, yeah, I definitely just have learned a lot from this. Um, and I will mention too, I had said that alfalfa was also in the mix. I did see a little bit of alfalfa sprout up but it wasn't enough it never obviously took off so that was a little bit disappointing but alfalfa is more of a perennial and it seems like we have it in our pasture and it seems like it does take a little bit of time for it to establish and get going and so planting it in the summer like may not have been the best thing um but noted noted so buckwheat is 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 great for a summer cover crop um and it grows really, really fast. But just be prepared to terminate it. Be prepared to handle it when you're done. Um, and don't let things get away from you. Also, um, if any of you have tried doing that three sisters method with the corn and the beans and the squash and been successful, I would love to know about that. Because not saying that my thought process was perfect, but... I would like to see that in action and I realize that I have never really seen that in action before. I've just heard it talked about a lot. So I um, would love to see that in action for sure. So anyways, 
my plans, take the mower through, try to chop up all that material, and I'll probably just continue to do that um, until the end of the season, just to make sure that I've, I'm keeping any extra weeds down. I really don't want a lot of that foxtail to go to seed. Yeah, so that was my cover crop experiment for the year. So if you're interested in learning about some more cover crops, we do have some sorghum sugan grass um, and a couple other millets and all that stuff. We do have an example of that on our other farm on a larger scale because we're going to be integrating livestock with that. And so I feel like that's something that would make a really great video. So that is on my to-do list. Um, and last year we also used like a cereal rye and a pea mix and turnip mix. So we do have pictures and information on that. And I would say that it's been halfway successful so far, but it's definitely, again, even with the small farms, it's the management that's the key. The management is the hard thing. And I think that's why whenever I was studying cover crops and like working with farmers and talking to farmers on field days and stuff like that, I think that's why people are so hesitant to adopt cover crops into their growing system is because it does take that little extra step of management. I think once you figure it out, it is fine, but um, a lot of these bigger growers, they would go all in the first year and do all of their acres and they just got so overwhelmed, they just didn't know what to do. And um, so I definitely think starting small, doing little experiments, even like I'm doing in their little backyard garden, I think that's a great way to kind of get your feet wet with, with cover crops and understanding how the crops grow. I mean, you can, I did my research on some of these things and I should know them, but I just, it's one thing to research, it's another thing to actually do it and see it and see how things own two eyes, right? So that's why I wanted to share this today. This may not be the most encouraging video, but maybe you're excited to dive deeper into that world. Um, there are a lot of great benefits to keeping your soil covered and having a living root in the soil at all times. If you want to read more about that, you should read the book Dirt to Soil by Gabe Brown. Very good read. Next year that bed will be in production and I'll have other beds that won't be. So we're gonna, our idea was we were gonna rotate where the cover crops were. So we'll see how that goes. But thank you for watching. If you have any questions, drop a comment. Um, check out our website for more information and blog posts and stuff like that. I'm trying to populate some more blog posts and edit some older ones as well. Get on our email list so you uh, learn about when the roses are going to drop. Anyways, if you like this video, please share it with a friend or hit the subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. Um, again, always welcome questions and we'll see you soon.